Okay, I hope this video works out well for you guys. I've got uh, it on my phone, but I want to show you. Um, what I demonstrated to my classes, or to my painting class, was a couple different things. Edging and blending is what's most important in this project. So I'm gonna give you this um, right now. This is a project that we're actually working on. This is a size canvas that you guys have. Um, I want you to blend a background first. So you see this background. Right now this background has a total of six different colors in it. Red, white, some purples, blues, um, and I tried to blend them all. The very first thing I did with this background when I started doing it though was to make sure I put down an entire blue coat on the background. So that blue coat that you see right here is what I did for the entire background. Then I come back over and do the blending because it's so much easier if you make a mistake to have a base coat down already. Uh, what I want to show you though is on here how to give it a nice perfect um, edge. So, uh, and I'm going to show you the blending at the same time. Right now I have blue, pink, and white, and I'm going to do this edge on here. So I'm going to do it with the blue. The thing that you want to do is use a flat brush. So like this is a round brush right here, and this is a flat brush. A flat brush will give you a really good edge if you work away from your hand. So if I do the edge right here and I use the flat brush to get this edge and I just kind of start to smooth it out, you can get a really good edge in here with the flat brush. You don't want to ever try to do the edge or a good edge on the same side as your hand. So I'm going to show you over here with this. If I try to do this edge this way using this brush, and I'm, I'm using my hand like this, I can do for the most part, but the problem is I can't see where the line is. So then when you look at the, the edge like that, the difference, how crisp and clean that edge is compared to, let's see if you can see the rough edge right there. The goal in this project more than anything is about proper edging. So I want you guys to focus on that. I want you to even see when it comes to a spot like this, I'm very carefully gonna do this edge. I'm gonna move in here a little bit, do this edge all the way up to there. I'm gonna turn the painting so that way I can do this edge now. And I'm going to do the edge just really slow and move the painting, move my hand. All right, so I turn the painting to get this edge right now. And the thing that you'll also notice with this paint is that you need to do a few coats of it. So if I'm putting this on here like this, And I'm really shaky right now, so try my hardest not to be. But that's the other thing I want to kind of give you guys a tip. If you're shaky, brace your hand. Like, I either put a finger down like this while I'm painting, or I put my hand down. But don't try to hold your hand up there. Because if I hold my hand up, I have a tendency to shake as much as you're seeing right now. Um, I have to brace my hand in order to get a good edge. That's why you always also want to make sure it's dry where you're... Um, putting your hand down to brace it. So it's gonna take a little bit to uh, fill that in. Let me pause it and I'll fill it in and then I'll continue the video. Okay, so I filled in and did the rest of the edging in here. And now what I want to show you is the blending. Um, we're gonna blend three different colors. So I'm telling everybody the rule of three. Anytime you do a blending area, I want you to at least use three different colors that work together. Um, make sure you're not putting two colors together in the color wheel that are going to be turning to brown. And those colors would be any colors that are directly across the color wheel from each other. For example, blue and orange will make brown, yellow and purple will make brown, and red and green 
will make brown. So you don't want to mix those colors together at any point in time or any combination that would make those colors. For example, if you mix blue and yellow together, it would make green, but if you're mixing blue and yellow and then red together, you're mixing those three colors together, which end up ends up therefore making brown. So you don't want to do that unless you actually want a brown color blended in there. But it's not a very pleasant looking brown, so just make sure you guys understand that. What I want to do is I'm going to blend the blue into the pink um, and like a light blue uh, in there. So I'm going to start again with this blue and I'm going to kind of work through the middle here on that edge again. Uh, sometimes you have to put a few coats of this down to get it to look nice because the, the paint that the school has is uh, the paint that I have to purchase is much thinner paint. So um, if I was using my home acrylics that I purchase, they're usually much thicker grade, better uh, quality paint, but I also pay a lot more for them um, than what we do here at the school. So um, that's why I don't bring them into the school. So I've got my blue down again. I'm gonna clean my brush off. Uh, I'm gonna dip into the white, which I know you see this white has a lot of blue mixed into it. I'm going to start blending the white right in there into the middle. Now I put the white down dead center in the middle. I put it down there. I'm going to dry my brush off right here and then I'm going to continue. That's going to help for a better blend by not just continuing with the brush at that full on wet acrylic stage. Okay, so now you've got that kind of blend from blue to light to blue again and then I'm going to throw a little of this pink in the middle here. I'm going to do the same thing again. Kind of clean my brush off of that color a little bit and then blend it back and forth. So now I get a little bit more. I'm going to do it a little bit more here. Throw a little bit more pink in there. Clean my brush off a little bit and work this blend. So that way you've got different colors there. Now I can also come back through with a little bit of blue on my brush and work it back into the middle. I do this with my brush a lot. Do this again where I work it back into the middle to get that blend from a blue to kind of a pink back to a blue. I would do that to this entire area now just so that that's what you see. That's the blending that I want to see done on this project. Now, I the project that you guys are doing is actually, um, it doesn't have to be an animal, but it's a geometric figure. For me, what I'm going to end up doing is I blended the background. This is something I talked about doing. I'm next going to um, paint in this outline of this giraffe completely in white. And I wanna do that because, uh, I want to be able to do colors over it. So I'm gonna do a nice edge with this giraffe, paint it in with these colors. I'm working that edge, working that edge, and I'm gonna do this, this edge this way now. The geometric, instead of having the, um, individual uh, hairs up. I'm doing like a, almost a dinosaur looking zigzag, but it's a giraffe. I'm gonna paint this entire thing in that color, then I'm gonna come back and do a blend over top of it. If I try to just put colors down over top of a base color, the theory, it won't work. That's why I'm putting white down first. So what I want you guys to do is get started into this project. Hopefully you'll be back in my classroom before you finish it. And if you are, then I can give you any tips or help but hopefully this video helps you get started with your edging, with your blending, um, having a nice blended background of some sort and what you're doing for the painting. And if it doesn't, please email me. Let me know where you're having a hard time and I'll try to figure out some way to record it so you guys have it.